I would love to see more black women interested in investing because black women are so smart, so brilliant, and they just don't know what they can do in the stock market and with investing. And I would love to like help people invest. So not help, let me back that up. Not help them invest, <laughs> but like show them like, hey, like, you know, this is a, a space for you and, and like you're accepted here and you're not the JP only one. JP Morgan Wealth Management presents an uninterrupted original hosted by Andrew Hawkins featuring Sloan Stevens. Uninterrupted and JP Morgan Wealth Management. To Needing Dough presented by JP Morgan and Uninterrupted. We have superstar Sloan Stevens in the building today. Today, an incredible tennis player, businesswoman in her own right, and today she's going to chat with us about wealth management and giving us tips for us all to get right. Sloan, what's up? Thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. Learning the process of investing in your finances and financial stability is tough. The first step is just to get information, and it's really not as complicated as it seems on the outset. It's just a matter of starting the process. So what would your advice be to people who feel that way? Yeah, I feel like starting the process is the most important part because I feel like when you go to like a bank or there's anyone that you can go to for financial help, like if you ask for help, they can help you. But if you just like sit at home and you don't ever ask and you're like, oh, it'll take care of itself, like it's not going to work. Like you actually have to be invested in yourself enough to then be invested in like your money. And I feel like a lot of people just don't take the first step, but the first step is so easy. Like I think it's so important to like really pay attention to your finances because it, it like the generation like gap and the generational wealth, like it really, you can support so many groups of people with doing like very little if you just pay attention. Besides investing or including investing, what, what are your financial priorities right now? Like where are you at now where you're like, hey, I wanna, these are the things that I'm focused on with my finances at this stage in my life. So for me, my biggest thing is now when I, you know, started saving money when I got my first big check, like after I won the US Open, that was like obviously the most amount of money I've ever gotten like at one time when my that direct deposit hit, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm rich. Like, <laughs> but I really wasn't that rich. Like compared to a lot of people, I wasn't that rich, but I was like, wow, this is so cool. Like, wow, I was, it was very <laughs> exciting. But I set up a plan to like save a certain amount of money by the time by 2025. I'm over 50% of my goal of what I wanna have saved by the time I retire. So for me, that's a good step. Like obviously I had to learn about like what, what your money does when you put it in the bank account. I had to like calculate all of the money like I would be able to spend when I retired, like what I could live off for every year if I saved this amount of money and if I fell short, if I went over, like, you know, what my spending every year could be. And like, we really calculated it down to a T of like what my expenses are and what I pay for now and like all of these things. And my main financial goal is to obviously fulfill my goal of reaching so I can live a comfortable life. Obviously, if I retire today, I would be totally fine. But in tennis, like all of your expenses are my own. So all of my flights, all of my hotels, all of my coaching, all of my fitness, everything is on me. I won't have those expenses when I retire, obviously, but I plan to have kids, like all of these things, like it changes from, you know, my sport and my lifestyle to like family and travel and experiences and all those things. And I, and I wanna be able to save enough money to be able to do all of those things without any restrictions. So right now, my biggest goal is to reach the goal of financial freedom, I would say, for myself, so that when I retire, I can live freely. Live the fruits of your labor. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so, so when you're investing, what are the things you're apprehensive about? I'm, ooh, what am I apprehensive? Uh, well, that I'm gonna lose all my money um, and Natural. whatever it is I invested in. <laughs> That's probably the first thing. And yeah. I don't like pick things based on like, oh, that looks cool, but like I don't really know anything about it. Um, I always try to like do a deep dive, but I would say the biggest thing I always is like, no one ever wants to lose their money. But like I told you before, like I wanna make sure that I'm aligned with the company and the people before I do like anything else. Mm. I, I love that. I mean, wrapping my mind around the concept of risk was a very big thing as far as managing, you know, wealth, because I, I think for a, a lot of people, when you come up under a certain situations, it's like, oh, once you get something, you want to hold on to it, which is smart once you are taking the time to educate yourself and learn as much as possible before you start getting your feet wet. 
But it, it was the turning point for me was when I realized I was also risking, you know, what I have by not making my money work for me. Because the opportunity there, it's it's the same thing, right? You want your you want to put your money to work. You want to start learning that process and put yourself in position. You know, we talked about it early on. Now is it can you see yourself doing things differently than you did back then? Yeah, definitely. Like my first investment was like significant investment, I would say, like was I, I bought a house, like I bought a condo and like my Uncle Ronald was like, you should buy a house, like you should buy somewhere you can live on your own, like, you know, you can practice, you can train, you can have some independence, you'll like it, whatever. And that was like my first mm -hmm. big investment. I'm just that person who listened like, hey, like you should do this because, you know, in five years it'll be worth this. Or when you move out and you get a bigger house, you can rent it and have, you know, passive income, whatever it may be. I feel like listening and being open to investments and having other people that have gone through it that can show you like, hey, now like I don't live there, but I make money off of my, you know, I make rental income. What advice do you have to younger women, black women specifically, that want to get their feet wet with investing? I say you have to go for it. Like it's so intimidating and I know it is, but you literally just have to be like, you know, I'm gonna start small. I'm gonna find someone to invest with or like find a partner. Like I always like to say like, you need an accountability partner in like everything that you do. And I feel like very small investments are very small like, you know, seminars or things that you can just like listen to other people invest in like what they're, you know, how they've gone through it or what they've done or who they invested with or maybe the people that mm -hmm. they used. Like, I feel like th that's really important before you just like jump in, obviously, because the stock market is very like, is very crazy and hectic. So I feel like right. whatever it is that you do, like know what you're doing before, like make sure you do all your research, but just like you have to just dive in. Like people are so intim intimidated and scared of the stock market and losing money. And like, you should be afraid to lose your money because the stock market is a scary place. But if you do it the right way, like you'll have a good experience and then you'll tell your friends and then you'll tell your other friends. And then as you invest and do things, like you'll learn from other people, you'll learn how it goes, like you'll you'll understand the market more and then you can educate others on what you've learned and how you can help others. And like, I feel like whenever somebody asks me, I'm like, yeah, like you should use this person or you should go here because they have like really great seminars and like they teach you stuff and you learn more. And like, I feel like being that, you know, uh, being a black woman and investing and like being very interested in it, I see that there's not very many people that look like me that are super interested in it. And I would love to see more black women interested in investing because black women are so smart, so brilliant, and they just don't know what they can do in the stock market and with investing. And I feel like it's an empty space and there's so much room for growth. And I would love to like help people invest. So not help, let me back that up. Not help them invest, <laughs> but like show them like, hey, like, you know, this is a, a space for you and, and like you're accepted here and you're not the only one. And I feel like that's like a really cool thing, but I wish more people would just, you know, take that leap and be like, you know, I'm just gonna try it. Tell us about this generous birthday present you got last year. <laughs> and like, give us this entire story because this is, this is wild. I turned 27 last year and my birthday present was I, well, I won't tell you the whole thing, but like I came out and there was like a table full of all of these like gadgets and like trinkets and things. Mind you, this gift is from my fiance. So he knows everything that I love and all the things that I like am obsessed with. So long story short, I got all of my favorite things, but he bought them for me in stocks, which is so interesting because I never like paid attention to my like day to day stocks and like how they were going up and down. And in the pandemic, I was looking at it every single day, like, okay, what's happening now? Like, wh like, why is it going up? Why is it going down? Like, why are certain stores doing way better than others? And like just random stuff. But I, I just felt like it was such a good gift because it honestly made me pay attention more to the stock market and like what was happening every day. Like on your phone, you look at like the S&P, you look at all these things, like that really means nothing to you. Like I would just be like, is it red today or is it green today? Like that's all I knew about it in the past. And then right. so when I got this birthday gift, it was like a real, like I could study it. Now when you re-signed with your first endorsement partner, you did things a little different the second time around. What was that? Yeah, it was so interesting because I was like just learning about contracts and like how they work and like what you can do to make contracts different and like all of this stuff. And my first like big deal was that I got stock in the company and 
I thought that was the coolest thing because I, I wasn't really that invested. I didn't know much about like stocks and whatever, but I just knew that like, okay, if I know anything, I know that like a lot of people do this and at the end of it, they make a lot of money. So I was like, I'm with this. So I was like, I totally want this. And it was actually very interesting because it helped me introduce me to stock. So it was like, it was a fun like transition into like the big girl realm. I've done deals that are just straight up brand deals and then going further, I've attached like stocks and investments into it just because I want to be invested and I feel like there's a long-term partnership with investment, there's a long-term partnership with stocks and all of these things that it just makes the, the relationship and the brand grow and I feel like that's super important, especially now that I've gotten older and I see the value in those things and the value that I bring to a partnership. So I, I like to feel like I can expand that and help grow a brand and that to me is like very cool. Sloan, thank you so much for joining us. On Needing Dough, you are the definition of more than an athlete. I appreciate you joining us here on the show.